Right, but you just gave me an idea that uh, there are these low carb promoters who say like I want to get fat adapted and uh, I will just run fat so I will not uh, eat carbohydrates even like during the activity and maybe just eat fat I don't know MCT oil or I don't know chia seeds or whatever but basically keeping it low carb outside of exercise you know keeping the steady energy during the exercise so what is your take on that yes i think this thing of carbohydrate periodization is um, a big is a big interest to me um and i think most people get it wrong um because it's kind of an idea that you want to like really really push up fat oxidation rates and like limit the carbohydrate availability um and during my phd actually one of the studies i did was focused on that um, so the current understanding of this like low glycogen training and low carbohydrate availability training is, is that um, you do a high intensity interval training session after which you don't eat anything that contains, contains carbohydrates or very little carbohydrates. So you may mainly focus on your nutrition on protein and perhaps fats. And then you start the next training session uh, and at that time, you will probably have your muscle glycogen stores very low. Your liver glycogen stores will be very low. And if we measure fat oxidation rates during such a session, um, fat oxidation rates would obviously be very high because basically there is no carbohydrates uh, to be used. Um, but the problem with those sessions is that they can be really short. Um, if you make them really long or longer than like an hour, they become really hard for people and the recovery time is going to be like tremendously long. Um, and one of the things that kind of I wanted to experiment was what would have happened had athletes um, received some carbohydrates during such a glycogen depleted ride. So for example, um, you start the ride um, with without a breakfast um, and you have avoided eating carbohydrates after the um, the session the previous uh, day. So um, the next morning you start the exercise session, you go for a run and only after, after like half an hour of an activity, you start to ingest carbohydrates. Um, and we found out that you do not suppress fat oxidation rates. Uh, if you introduce carbohydrates with a uh, 30 minute um, delay. So basically you're still using carbo um, a lot of fat, but what you do achieve is you maintain uh, glucose levels in the bloodstream, which probably means that you are uh, doing less damage to your body, um, which can actually be very beneficial, uh, especially uh, if you take into account the recovery process. Mm -hmm. I, I I actually used to do that strategy like when I started, but I did not even know about like physiology of it. Yeah, it's kind <laughs> or of benefits or whatever. I heard about this strategy actually, to be honest, from Chris Froome's book like years ago, and I was I started thinking, what does this mean in terms of physiology? And then yeah, uh, I was looking for papers on that, and there wasn't much much about that. So yeah, I started looking into that from the scientific. Uh, perspective but i guess uh what you just mentioned it was in athletes that they are, that are like not on a low carb diet overall right this was like only like tra train low protocol yeah exactly so these were assets um like normal people uh we had to max i think around 58 on average uh so like moderately trained probably doing like eight to 12 hours of training per week at most. And um, yeah, they were like habitually adapted to a high carbohydrate diet. And one of the things that really was also interesting to me was that um, we have three different conditions. So on one condition, they got a lot of carbohydrates before the second training session. And on two conditions, they didn't have any carbs 
Um, they did the session. They started the session faster. On one occasion, they got carbohydrates during, like with a 30 minute uh, delay. And on the other occasion, they uh, didn't get anything at all until the end. And what was interesting was how big of a difference in fat oxidation rates, just removing, restricting uh, carbohydrate intake made. Uh, so, for instance, um, when we do, when you take a look at, um, when you have a look at uh, fat max um, of normal people, you probably see a value of like 0.5, 0.6 grams per minute so this is the maximum amount of fat people can use um, after an overnight fast whereas in this study those people stripped of muscle and liver glycogen um, were able to without any difficulties uh, utilize in excess of one gram per minute of fat uh, which is like almost as much as low carb adapted athletes uh, so just like one night without carbohydrates made such a big difference. Oh, that's interesting. I, I've never seen that. Yeah. We, I, so basically you can... We were really surprised. To yeah, see sorry. This, yeah. So basically you can be benefit from like, uh, let's say low carb adaptation without really being low carb all the time. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the point of like carbohydrate periodization. Um, these those sessions were really hard. Like, uh, my I had like troubles sleeping. Uh, I usually have tr trouble sleeping when um, my glycogen stores are low. But yeah, uh, as a training st strategy or nutritional strategy, better to say, um, this is a viable and a really good option. Well, what what is anyway? the reason to do that kind of sessions so um yeah that, that's a good one so um i never do such sessions with elite athletes so for example i work with cyclists that can they have all the time um they want for training so they can do like 20 hours a week they can do 30 hours a week if necessary um but then you have athletes like myself that we cannot have uh, we don't have the time all the time available so we can we are restricted to like training like let's say 10 hours a week um so at certain point if you want to get better you need to increase the training volume um and utilizing such an approach for example like restricting carbohydrates before a training session can actually maximize the adaptations um from a training sessions when you're like limited in time. Uh, so it's more time efficient training. Um, it's not necessarily better, it's just more time efficient training. 